I've recorded every single Mythic Plus key that I've attempted in Season 3, and in this series I'm going to cover the highs and lows of each dungeon on my way to pugging to the 0.1% title. In today's episode we're not messing about so we're going to jump straight into it with a 27 at Aldazar. As you normally would on a 4 to 5 week your first pull is going to be on the left side. And to be honest this one went really clean. We had some vortexes out for the merciless assaults. I was trying to bait them as well by continuously running. And me and the DH were pumping DPS so it fell over pretty quickly. On to Razan then. Seb actually got devoured literally a mile away from the boss when it was doing its pursuit. Apparently there is a bug that if you're jumping while running away, the Z axis like bugs out. I think it's the Z axis or the Y axis, the, the vertical axis bugs out and then you actually get devoured even if you're an absolute mile away, which Seb was right here. So that was unfortunate, but we got him back up. After Razan, we ran back up the stairs, pulled all of the Sour Rids, which I think is a questionable play on a 27. I was a bit ahead of the rest of the pack, so... I popped a turtle to make sure that when they leaped to me, I didn't instantly get one shot because they could probably only leap to me. That did not save me though. We were a bit stacked up here. I used my binding shot. I'm not really sure how else we could have lived here. I just don't think it was the play to pull all of these at the same time. Definitely a sketchy week, especially for a Taldazar, especially on this right side as well, which I know a lot of groups skip in the higher keys. With bolstering, these honor guards really do become a problem. So you want to kill the group as evenly as you can. And then we get to the totem before Volcal, and we pull onto the totem here. So I start killing the totem. Obviously, we've got the two other witch doctors as well that we need to take care of. But we start DPSing the totem down so that we can get active DPS onto the honor guard. The tank then sort of like semi pulls the honor guard away from it. But I didn't really realize and he also pulled the stalkers on the stairs at the same time. So we killed the totem. I mean, and even on the route that he did, this is not how he was meant to do the pull. So yeah, I don't really know what was going on here. But yeah, with the AoE going out from the Honor Guard, you got the Venom Blast going out from the Witch Doctors and also the AoE from the Stalkers that we then pulled into this pack. Not looking good, so we do end up dying. I also had a bug here. I don't know where my pets were, but it said no path available for me. So that definitely threw me off and I wasn't really thinking about my defensive usage and CC usage as well. Not to make excuses, but you do have these moments sometimes as a BM Hunter where your pets just completely mess with you. So that unfortunately is the end of the key. You can't really have 13 or over 13 deaths and still time a 27, unfortunately. In the same stream then, I kind of entered this next key. We went into a 25 Blackbrook hold. Obviously, it is a bolstering week. So the tank was trying to split up the first pool with Lust, which I don't know if it's still the play. I think you just pull it all in Lust and nuke it all down. So, I mean, I didn't mean to anyway, but I accidentally clicked on a mob patrolling up the stairs. So I barb shot that while my pets pulled that into the pack. So you're kind of just used to pulling all of this together and Lusting it. Even on a Tyran week, you seem to do that. So... Yeah, I'm not sure why we tried to split that up. I mean, BRH is a free timer, so maybe that's what he was thinking going into it. But yeah, I definitely entered this key. That is my bad. <laughs> Swiftly moving on then, we jump ourselves into a 25 Waycrest mana. At the start, I did get one banged by the Scar Soul. I didn't realize that I had my stun off of cooldown here. Definitely could have lived that. But yeah, a bolstered soul essence with probably like seven or eight stacks of bolstering just one shots me in that situation so that's on me i definitely could have and should have stunned at this point in the season there was a bug with the witch boss that caused them to like randomly melee i'm not really sure exactly what was bugging but my pets actually died on this first boss um because of that bug and literally the next day they fixed it i think one of the witches or if the tank didn't have aggros on the witches i don't i don't know but basically yeah it was just melee i know that players were getting one shot by this but my pets were also getting one shot so lost dps on the first fight here the tank pulled three witches together on a bolstering week i'm not sure i mean to be fair it's probably a fine pull i was literally using everything i could to live here that i pretty popped a turtle for one of the infected thorns that was going through on me all of my defenses are on cooldown here pretty much i don't want to use survival of the fittest when i'm already at 10 percent but then i get taken out by an uproot definitely a scary pull without comms we're gonna overlap kicks here we're gonna overlap cc my kick's currently on cooldown i could have used a freezing trap but it is a hard ask i think like when mobs are stacked up together you don't know which mob is going to eat the freezing trap we then move on to the soul bank goliath this is pre-nerf to the soul thorns we lust it obviously even on a fortified week you still want to lust this because soul thorns was giga op and still is probably giga op i pretty much got every single soul thorns as you do and i did actually end up dying twice the enhanced didn't kill it in time 
I should have stacked in as well. And also we had an augmentation of Ochre, which is far from ideal on this fight. You lose a lot of damage if the Soul Thorns doesn't go onto the Org. I was having a day of it here. I did think that this could have been my fault if the rest of the group was line of sighting the Spits here, but they weren't. It was just my luck that they all targeted me with a Spit. If I had my play to profile that I currently do have now, then I would have been able to see it. I mean, not saying that I would have pressed the defensive for it because there is a lot going on. But yeah, I just get taken out by the spits here in 0.1 seconds. Like I said, if the rest of my group line of sighted and I stayed out in the open like an idiot, then I could blame myself for this one. I mean, I arguably still could blame me for it. I died with my defensives off of cooldown, but yeah, just got unlucky with the spits. Moving on to Gorak Tool then, the last boss. We do go into this boss with very limited time, so we are racing against the clock here. I mean, I'm not 100% sure what the best play would be to do here. For one, I saved my Call of the Wild for when Lust was coming up to get the most value out of it, but by the end of the fight, I realized I could have got two Call of the Wilds out of this fight. So I'm not sure what the best play would have been there. Also, towards the end of the fight, I wasn't really paying attention to the timer, so I'm still trying to get these ads down. I mean, arguably, we could have definitely got overwhelmed by the ads towards the end of the fight if we didn't stick onto the ads here and just focus boss to get it down. But then we weren't going to time the key anyway without just focusing the boss. So I definitely could have been more aware here and focus on the boss to get it down. But there's no guarantee that we wouldn't have just wiped to the ads instead. But yeah, I think if I swap to the boss with like 25% HP left and just fully focus the boss instead, then we might have timed the key here. It would have been very close regardless. But yeah, we can chalk that one up as me. I wasn't playing amazingly in this key. The Shaman definitely let me know after the key as well. So thanks for that one, buddy. But I also did get unlucky in parts with the Spits, for example. My pets dying on the first boss and getting all the Soul Thorns because that's what I love to do. Come back the next stream then, jump ourselves into a 25 black rook hold. Again, on the first boss, for some reason, I can't trap the intermission mobs. I let the group know this time because they called for my trap, but yeah, it just doesn't work for whatever reason. Did some unearthly damage in the corridor that we all love. Without lust here, I was sustaining around a million and a half DPS, so pretty happy with myself there. Moving up to Smash Bite, we have the Dominators and their Sick Bats cast on the stairs. Not too familiar with what to do here, honestly. I popped a defensive, stayed still, used my bind. I would use a binding shot if I had binding shot. I just realized that I was talented into scatter shot for this dungeon. But yeah, let me know down in the comments. Like, are you meant to just stay in so that you can passively cleave on the bats while using a defensive so that you don't instantly die to them? I know they limited the amount of bats that can actually be fixated on you. But I feel like at a certain level of fortified key, they are probably just going to end up killing you anyway. But then also you don't want to run away from the pack because then the bats aren't actually going to die from the cleave from the rest of your group. So it's a tricky one. Other than that, the key is pretty free. We ended up pulling the two fell guards onto Smash Bite just to speed up the key a little bit more. We didn't manage to two chest the dungeon, but it was very close. Scary P1 on the last boss. The Shadow Bolts on a fortified week are still hitting me for 700,000 damage literally almost one-shotting me so that is bloody terrifying like on a tyrannical week that is a one-shot and that is why you lost p1 if you've got it up finish the dungeon with 420,000 overall dps pretty happy with that for a pug i could definitely do more in an organized group and if the pools weren't as sloppy got nine score out of this taking us up to 3245 mythic plus rating after this no messing about with the same group we ran into a 26 galacrons full that's what I'd advise you guys to do if you have a nice group, if they're friendly and they're also good players. See if they want to team up and do some more keys after. You may as well, otherwise you're just gambling again on getting another good group for your next key. So what we did at the start was we stealth passed the first couple of packs and then pulled the rippers into the first boss with last all our cooldowns. The only problem is the tank kind of staggered it so that we popped our cooldowns and lust and got most of our damage out on the first pack before he actually pulled it into the boss so that wasn't ideal like i only had about 10 seconds remaining on my call of the wild as we went into the boss i also have to use a global to hunt as mark the boss i mean to be fair that's on me i could have done that from a distance before we pulled the first pack bolstered rippers are not your friend though one of them time ripped onto me hit me for 640k don't get me wrong, I was not aware that this was going on me. I've since then got a weak aura that counts down the trashes timers as well. But yeah, I was just pretty slow on moving out of this. My movement abilities were on cooldown as well. So I could have exiled or something, but I just should have been more aware that they were going to time rip soon. 
Time waste trash, you can't expect to clear this area without a few deaths at least. Here, all of my defenses are on cooldown except for Turtle. I get the Tainted Sands debuff, which just hits like a truck. Bloom hits like a truck. We all know how much stuff hurts in this area. I could have turtled and reduced the damage by 30% here. I don't know if that would have saved me, but I do end up ticking out to the debuff. After racking up 13 deaths though, we took out the time ways with no issues at all. Shouldn't really expect to have issues on Fortified Weeks, but it is the time ways boss in a pug, so you never know. Then before the Blight Galakrond, we skipped a dragon, which later bit us in the arse. We actually needed that dragon, but we weren't aware. Moving on to the Blight of Galakrond then, somebody told me that the Fane Death Tech was patched, but it is definitely not, so you guys can still Fain the Corrosive Orb and eliminate so much of the damage and panic from this fight. So definitely do that where you can. But other than the time waste trash, the key generally wasn't too bad, but it somehow still felt really tight on the timer. So we did end up depleting it by two minutes. I guess it's mainly because we had to go back for percentage. We did have quite a few deaths as well, but I've timed a 25 with 30 deaths before. So definitely felt tighter, but that is a deplete for the boys. Same stream, we got ourselves into a 24 Everbloom. God, looking back at my nameplates now, I can see why you guys were on at me. Now that I've finally been converted to a Plater Andy, my old nameplates were disgusting. <laughs> Did a big pull at the start. The DH was pumping here as well, but we ended up with a very large and in-charge Berserker. With the Plater profile and the weak aura tracking the timers of mobs as well, I definitely would have been able to stun the mob here to prevent these deaths, but Seb and the Priest did get taken out by the Bounding Well. I had, a I had a freezing trap too, which I definitely could have used, but it would have been in my area, probably not there, so I don't think that would have saved them. On a bolstering week, you definitely want to skip the abominations. I'm not really sure what the tank was doing in this run, but he managed to skip pretty much everything, so he needed the percent later on. Shock horror. There was lots of deaths in this key, to be honest. I feel like, I don't want to call the healer out, but I feel like they were struggling a bit. They definitely struggled on the council boss, so we had to wipe that and go again. Again, we had a very large and in-charge mob here. We bolstered the Frick out of the Pyromancer, so I completely forgot about his Cinderbolt uh, Salvo or Storm. Cinderbolt Salvo. I completely forgot about that ability. Don't know how I managed to do that, but yeah, I died because the healer was already dead. I mean, I think it was going to kill us anyway. But I used two defensives here to try and live it, and it still just took me out in two bolts. Pog champ. But yeah, unluckily, we bolstered the Ice Cooler as the Frostbolt cast ended, so it just one-shot the healer. I did have my kickoff of cooldown, but generally I don't ever really think about kicking the Ice Cooler because it doesn't really hurt that much, especially when you compare it to the Pyroblast and Arcane Blast. On the Archmage Soul then, the tank realized how much of the dungeon he had actually skipped here, so he told me to run away from the boss at around 20% across the dungeon to go and pull some trash that he forgot about. But he ended up dying anyway, so that was a wipe. That key is dead. Very, very interesting key. Not sure what the root was there. And yeah, the healing definitely felt a little bit lackluster. Moving on to another interesting key, we have a 25 Waycrest Manor. At the start, I asked the tank where he was going. I don't know if he said this out of ego, like he, th he thought he was better than the rest of the group. So he just said, follow me, I'm going left. Or if he was just a bit... Um, you know, a bit on the lower IQ and he thought I asked which door he was going through because you always go left anyway. So yeah, the Feral ended up dying on the three witch boss. Again, it seemed like the healer was struggling here. It's not the same healer, but definitely just the Druid just ticked out. He's got all of his defenses on cooldown. Not much damage was going out and the healer just kind of let him die. So the fight went on forever here. So in turn, our DPS looked a lot worse, which will come into play later. We did get the Feral up, but again, it just seemed like the Feral ticked out. So not sure what was going on here. The Feral was quite a good player as well. So yeah, definitely very interesting. We did a big pull with the Witch here, took out the pack. And then I did end up ninja pulling the pack on or the patrol on the stairs. So that is on me. Didn't really make a difference in all honesty, to be fair. Here, the healer asked for mana twice in the party chat. The tank just proceeded to ignore the healer and ran outside and did a massive pull that is quite clearly going to bolster the witches and later kill us all. But in good old pug tank fashion, he then decided it was the rest of our group's fault, started flaming our DPS, started flaming all of us. To be fair to him, he was pumping DPS in this key. I'm not really sure how he managed to keep up so well. I wasn't doing the most damage. But he also was doing big pulls when I didn't have my cooldowns. Like he would go into a big pull just after I've literally just popped my Call of the Wild. So that definitely doesn't help the overall damage here. But yeah, just super, super toxic player. 
thought he was better than everybody from the get-go. I mean, it was a questionable key. The healers definitely seemed to be struggling on the first boss. But yeah, just one of those players that thinks DPS is the be-all, end-all of keys. And that was the only thing that he had going for him because he obviously didn't have that many brain cells pulling all those jagged hounds onto those thorn shapers like that. So yeah, just an interesting one. Sometimes you have to deal with these players in the pugging life. Some more interesting keys then for this episode. We had a big bolster pull at the beginning. In Everbloom with affixes like bolstering, bursting, you really can't help it. The dread petals just die so quickly that they just cause the affix to be 10 times more of a problem than it should be. On the first boss, the Boomy ran off to pull the lashes just before the tank pulled the boss. So he got locked out. We ended up having to kill the boss without him. Took us forever and so much time onto our key. Very interesting decision making right there. At the top, again, I died to the Frostbolt. To be fair, it only had one stack of bolstering. I did have my kickoff cooldown, so no excuse. I just need to put more respect on the Ice Cooler's name. But it did only just kill me by about 20k HP. Definitely could have been stopped though, so that's my bad. Then we wiped to the three wizards because of a lack of kicks. I mean, our comp is really not designed around kicks here. The two DPS died, then the healer died to the Cinderbolt Salvo, and then it lights out for the rest of us. Stayed to finish the key though, because I think the Boomy wanted to re-roll his key. Ended up with 28 deaths by the end of it, but it was a deplete. But yeah, from the start of this key, I didn't feel like there was much hope in ever timing it, so I wasn't too disappointed by the end of it. I think this was the last 24 I needed on Fortified, so I needed to get an Everbloom, so I was just spamming Everblooms at this point. In this Everbloom, the tank was a complete weirdo who got com so he got so tilted at one comment before the first boss and said, right, that's it, I'll leave right now. Try me, basically. So yeah, that was weird vibes from the beginning. I don't know if it was just a miscommunication. I don't know if his English wasn't great, which fair enough if it wasn't. But yeah, it definitely seemed like he was just one of those players that if you question anything he does, he's like, right, I'm leaving right now. Had some deaths over the course of the key to the bolstered abominations and also the berserkers. Then bloody dread petals really ruining our keys. On the council boss, the tank got one shot by the noxious charge. He wasn't topped for when it was going off. Don't know if he used a defensive for it or maybe he had his back to the boss. Not really sure, but he got taken out. We did luckily have a CR on the Feral Druid though, so we got him back up and killed the boss. And then we ended up wiping on the Archmage. Both of the DPS got frozen by the orb. Seb ended up dying to that. The Druid got very low from it. Then the Druid sat on 20 HP for the next five seconds and then just instantly died to the Cinderbolt Storm. <laughs> I'm not surprised about that one little bit. And that was the key over. I mean, I think it was already over at this point maybe we could have squeezed the last boss in within five minutes but probably not but yeah loving my life in everbloom at the moment if you couldn't tell the same stream it was my mission in this stream to get a 24 or a 25 everbloom timed here we jumped into a 25 everbloom in this run we had a huge tank with a really nice route for bolstering so we skipped a lot of the abominations he did end up disconnecting on the first boss, which, I mean, it didn't really affect us, but the DK did end up dying because he got aggro from the ads, I'm pretty sure. The DK was pumping in this key. I don't know if you guys recognize his name, but he has been in a previous episode, but he was doing work in this key. He was doing a lot of damage. We ended up trying to skip just before the council boss. I feel like this never goes well in pugs. Somebody always ends up ninja pulling or like we did here, we just ended up pulling literally everything. I think the demon hunter forgot to cage one of the mobs so yeah we ended up pulling here all of us died but then for some reason i'm not really sure why but he wasted a lot of time just tanking the two abominations by themselves he was a giga tank so yeah i don't really know what was going on there toxic bloom did end up going off on the council boss but the healer was a giga chad so we ended up living through it the last boss was also fine but we did end up depleting by seven seconds i'm not really sure how because this was kind of like a beast of a group we only had six deaths. Obviously, we would have timed the key if we didn't have those six deaths. But this timer, for whatever reason, felt super, super tight. And in comparison to this next key, spoiler alert, we do finally end up timing the 24 Everbloom. The timers just seemed wildly different. Started off the key with a two mil opener. I mean, it's pretty standard at this point. If you've got lust, I think I had PI as well. You're going to be hitting some big old numbers. That being said though, for whatever reason this season, I just don't think that priests are aware that BM got a two minute cooldown. So priests always seem to desync their PI with my cooldowns and it is the most tilting thing in the entire world. Having, just seeing your character start glowing halfway through no cooldowns and then you know you've got your big two minute coming up. And it's just like, priest, what are you doing buddy? 
Took the lashes onto the first boss. Like I've mentioned in previous episodes, you don't want to pop your cooldowns on these. Still save your cooldowns for the DPS increase phase on Witherbark. Just passively cleave down the lashes. They will eventually die. As long as your tank can live, then you'll be Gucci. Again, we skip the abominations because of bolstering. Bolstering and bursting, those affixes in this dungeon, they're not your friends. I did end up ninja pulling a berserker here. Just hunter life, you know. I've got to do it once in a while to remind you guys that I'm a hunter main. And that berserker did actually end up killing me. We did a big pull with lust just before the council boss. Kind of sketchy, especially in a pug because council seems to cause so many problems. So we ended up with some big DPS on this pool. Again, leaving up Berserkers that are bolstered out of their mind. You want to be using your binding shots here. Stuns if you've got timers on when they're going to do their bounding well. And also if you're a hunter, place a freezing trap in front of you because then they'll just leap into it and won't do their bounding well. Thankfully, the council boss was fine, even without lust. And the tank had a really nice route after the council for the different mages. We went around the back of them first so that we could take the Pyromancer pretty much by itself and not bolster it and then we went back into the ice cooler so that was a really efficient way to play with bolstering you can tell this tank definitely thought about how he was playing this dungeon and then we did end up killing the last boss with six minutes left which is just wildly different to the previous key that was a 25 it's only one key level of difference i guess this was just a lot cleaner a lot smoother i mean to be fair the dps difference was also wild in this key as well like i'm going into the last boss with 450k and we end up at 474k overall so super happy with that one. This run is actually this full run is actually on my YouTube as well. So if you guys do want to check that out, then I'll leave it in the description below. We get 10 score out of this. Finally, we got our last 24 time that we needed on Fortified. It takes us up to 3,255 Mythic Plus rating, which is actually higher than my overall Mythic Plus rating for Season 2. So it was super, super chuffed with that. But that's where we're going to leave it for this episode, guys. If you guys did like this series, then please feel free to drop a like down below and subscribe to your boy. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later.